Hey there, this is Megan with Crafting for a Cause. Uh, today we're just gonna talk a little bit about putting together like a sensory blanket. So, what we've done so far is we've cut a piece of durable upholstery fabric for the top. Uh, it's approximately 24 inches by 36 inches. Uh, doesn't have to be exact, however you choose really. Uh, we're gonna have one piece that is the top and then a second piece that's softer for the bottom. Uh, so, okay, so what we have here now um, are two strips eight inches long. This is what three eighths of an inch ish wide. We've got our little buckle, um, and then also we have two inch wide strips here, um, and then they've been ironed half an inch in on both sides. So you can make these as long as you want. You're gonna be using this a lot in these projects because we're gonna be using this to pretty much cover up any raw edges of the different sensory items. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use like little squares off of each of this. So uh, I will bring it up to the machine and I'll show you what, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take our buckle and separate it. So we have the two pieces. I'm gonna run my ribbon through the buckle, make sure the ends are even-ish. I'm gonna take the right side of this, you can see that the fold is on the underside, okay? So right side, I'm gonna match up the edge of my tape with the edge there, and I'm gonna sew these two pieces together. So we sewed the ribbons onto the little pieces. We sewed the other side. What we're going to do is it will be turned over. So just cut off a little piece here. And a little piece here. And then you're going to fold the raw edge in a little bit and put it on your blanket. Make sure that you leave enough space along the outer edges um, so that when we sew the backing on and flip it, nothing is too close to the edge. And then you want to pin it on. Correct me if I'm doing anything wrong. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> and then make sure you snap it together so that you know like where to place the other edge. <laughs> You want to give it a little bit of wiggle room, right? Yeah. And you know how precise I am, so you just kind of line it up and then pin it. These and are fun, eclectic blankets anyway. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I could go diagonal with it. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But you want to give it a little bit of Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do all the pieces and pin them on and so we know where placement's going to be. So this is our first activity. Yay! Okay. Another activity that we've got um, is going to be a little piece of elastic here with various beads on it. So the idea is if these are secured here, they can push the beads back and forth on the elastic. Uh, so this elastic is about seven inches. Again, you can make it however long you want. We just already have these pre-cut. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the buckle here, with the ends. So I'm gonna take our bias strip that we've made, right? That has the half inch folded under. I'm gonna put right sides together, just like this. And then I'm gonna sew across. Yep. Okay, so you can see how we have sewn these together, right sides together, and then you can fold them out. 
when we place these down, the elastic raw edge is going to go towards the, the bias tape. So now I'm just going to cut a little bit. Oops, sorry. I'm going to cut a little bit. So when I place this on our blanket here, however I want to put it on. Oops, sorry. Oops. Good. Let's say I want to go like this. Because we can put these wherever we want. Make sure that your raw elastic is going towards the black or towards your bias. I'm going to fold in the raw edge right here. Oh, I'm going to try to not put my hands in the way. And I'm just going to pin that down. Close enough. Folding in the raw edge. Pinning it all down. There we go. So that's our second activity. And you can see they can move the beads. They can kind of stretch the elastic if they want. Just like that. So we've got another little piece of elastic. This is approximately seven inches again. Uh, again, you can go longer, shorter, totally up to you. And then we've got a button with a stem on the back. You see the stem? That'll make this project a little bit easier. You can also use this type of button, the flat button that doesn't have a stem, but it's gonna be simpler with the stem. Okay, so what we're gonna do <laughs> excuse you, Remy, <laughs> is we're going to take our elastic with the raw edges, and we're just going to put our raw edges together. That'd be the easiest way to do this. And then, just like we did with everything else, we're going to put right sides together on our little bias strip, and we're going to sew a line right there. All right. Okay, so you can see how we sewed the raw end of the elastic to the raw end of our little bias strip here, uh, right sides together. So the folds are on the back side. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this out. Remember that raw edge of the elastic is going towards the bias strip. And then we're just gonna cut off a little bit like we have before. All right, so we're gonna fold in our raw edge here. I know. <laughs> so once you decide kind of where you're gonna place all of your activities, you'll then take this button and hand sew it down um, at the edge of this elastic here, kind of where the center of the button hits the edge of your elastic, so that once it's secured, you'll be able to wrap the elastic around the button. Lining buckle next. It has this center piece, and then it's on this square. And then we also have two pieces of ribbon. These are each eight inches long, but again, you can do these any length you want. And then we've got our bias strips. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our ribbons and we're going to wrap it around this center bar here. The little slidey bar, that's what we're going to wrap it around. So you're going to go up through the middle and then back down around. So you can see how I've got it around that center piece. And then I'm going to pull both of these ribbon ends so that they're the same length. And these two raw edges right here of this ribbon are going to be attached to my bias strip here, right sides together, just like that. So one thing to keep in mind here um, is what is the top and the bottom of this buckle. So as the buckle sits like this, as it is, this is the top side of the buckle. This is upside down, okay? So when we're doing right sides together, make sure that 
your right side, which is your top side, is attached to the right side of your bias strip, just like that. Now with the other ribbon, this one doesn't have a right or a wrong side. We're just gonna choose one raw edge and match it with our raw edge of our bias strip and put a seam. So now that I've got these sewn together, we've sewn our ends together. If you find that when you put your buckle down, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the wrong side. Don't worry, you can just flip it. Now it's correct. <laughs> uh, okay, and then our other side is gonna go like this. So we're gonna, again, snip it and snip it. Now let's put this one here. Gonna fold in our raw edge. And then on the other ribbon, we're going to fold in our raw edge. And there's no real distance that you need to put it away from the buckle. Um, I would say probably this far away is good. So I'll show you how it works in a moment. Pin it down. And then the buckle is just going to go under this piece of metal, over that center piece, and then under this one. Just like that. Except not twisted. So the next one we're going to do is a little bit more complicated. So we've got our zipper here. This one's approximately 8 inches. Um, if you have longer zippers, you can shorten them or you can make a nice long zipper across the blanket. Totally up to you. Uh, we're going to make this really simple. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our bias strip and you can see I've got the fold up so you can see what's going on here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna open up this fold a little bit and match raw edge to raw edge. You see that? I'm also leaving about an inch on the outsides at least. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew across here. Uh, you can sew on the little fold that you've made already or you can sew a little bit further in, totally up to you. Just when you're sewing, beware of the little metal piece here, not to try to stitch over that because it will break your needle. So you're going to do that on this side, and then you're also going to do that on this other side here. So again, I've got the folds up right now. I'm going to unfold it, put raw edge to raw edge, and I've got at least an inch on the edges. This just makes folding them under easier later and then I'm going to sew across the top here. If you find that the head of the zipper is really in your way, what you can do is you can unzip your zipper halfway and just make sure that these stay together when you place your bias strip on there. Okay. okay, so you can see that we've sewn across here and across here. Now all I have to do is fold my bias strip back over and then I'm going to cut the excess off and then we're going to fold these raw edges under. So 
So there's a lot of different uh, variations you can do on this zipper. You could make a full zipper pouch if you wanted. Uh, you could attach the zipper to pieces of fabric this way if you'd like. Um, also when you do your zipper, make sure that you have it nice and flat. All we're gonna do with this one is when we sew it onto our blanket, we're gonna take our zipper foot and we're gonna go along the zipper on both sides and then we're also gonna go around the bias tape to secure it to the blanket. Okay, just like that. So what we're gonna make now is we're gonna make a, a lace with a tie. So we've got eight little strips of three inch ribbon. We've got eight little, um, it's like half inch plastic circles. And then we've got our bias strips that are folded, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, first thing is we're gonna attach our little loops to our bias strip. So we're gonna take one of the ribbons, run it through our circle just like so. I'm gonna flip my bias strip over, unfold it, flip it back over. So you can see how we've got the folds kind of like at a peak. So it's right side up right now, wrong side down. I'm gonna take my little ribbon, I'm gonna turn it over so that my raw edges are matching. So match up raw edge to raw edge, leaving about an inch of space here so I can fold that under later. I'm gonna pin that to my bias strip real quick. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna do this with all of the rest of these up the bias strip on both sides um, and putting just equal distance between your rings. Okay, as you can see, we've got our two bias strips, raw edges together here, right side is up with our little rings on them. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just sew you can either sew on the fold that you've created here or you can sew on the inside of the fold. Uh, you're gonna sew the little ribbons to the bias strips. Okay, so now we've got the stitching line right here. You can see right on the inside of the fold there. I'm just gonna cut off any excess bias tape we got. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our bias tape back on those folds that we had before. So there's one. I'm going to scooch everything over a little bit. And again, just folding it underneath. Just like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold these little raw edges underneath. one and we want to make sure that these are straight across from each other. Put a little bit of distance between them. Yeah, it looks a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So you can put another pin here if you'd like to keep it nice and secure. But when we sew this on, we're just gonna go right around the block. Okay, uh, now with this, we're gonna take extra ribbon and we're going to pretty much lace up a shoe. So once you've got your ribbon laced through the little circles, you see my beautiful bow at the bottom. Um, what you're also going to want to do is at the very top of your shoelace here is going to stitch this ribbon down to your blanket. So just do a straight stitch across the top here to make sure that this ribbon doesn't fly away and get lost. Okay, so for this next one we've got a few different pieces that we're going to be working with. So we've got these, um, oh my goodness, we've got these little like shower curtain holder curtain things um, that are pretty much a circle with a little clap clip on them. Um, I've got our little eight inch, seven inch pieces of elastic. I've got one, two, three, four, five of those. I've got four little circles and then three different pieces of bias strip. Uh, two smaller ones and then the one big one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our first piece of elastic and we're going to match raw edges, right sides together, on our bias strips and we're just gonna sew on both sides. All right, so we've got our elastic attached at the ends here. I'm just gonna snip off some extra bias there. And then we can go ahead and slide our little curtain rods on here, curtain clips, whatever. And then I'm going to attach this to our mat, holding the raw edges under. just like so. So we got our little clips here. So what we're gonna do next, very similar to how we did the uh, clips here with the ribbon and the circle, how we attach that to our bias strip, we're gonna do the same thing here. But instead of ribbon, we've got these nice elastic. So we're gonna put our little circle through the elastic the ends of our elastic together and then we're gonna unfold our bias strip here so it makes little peaks and we're gonna attach raw ends together so this elastic is gonna attach to our bias strip just like that so I'm gonna attach all four on here real quick. And if you don't have these little white circles to go on your elastic, that's totally fine. Uh, you can, another option is using an elastic strip with a little tab of fabric. Uh, you could do just elastic. Uh, totally up to you and what you got at home. So you see I've got our little folded elastics with the white circles at the end pinned raw edges to raw edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew either on the fold or on the 
outside of the fold there, closest to the edge, all these elastic strips. Okay, so we've got our elastics, raw edge to raw edge, stitched along the edge of our bias tape here. I'm just gonna trim our bias tape a little bit so that the edges are even. Now we're gonna fold this back under. And then I'm gonna pull this just so that the little rings meet the clips. Okay, and then I'll show you how this guy works. So we're gonna fold the raw edges underneath. Just about like so. All right, just like that. So with this little activity, uh, what you do is you're gonna take the little loop and then you hook it. Of course, this is one of the ones that. Uh, I thought we got them all. <laughs> the first time is hard. And you hook it to the little ring all the way down. If you don't have rings, again, totally doable to just clip it to the elastic, or you can make a little tab of fabric. Totally up to you. Just like that. But now we're gonna make a pocket with a button, or a pocket <coughs> without a button, however you wanna do it. We're gonna go over the, uh, the pocket part right now. So this is a 10 by seven and a half piece of fabric. You can use any size you want, um, and if you have a different way of putting a pocket on something, by all means, do it however you choose. There's many, many ways. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our right sides together like this. Stitch along the outside here, leaving an opening in the bottom, and then stitch along the outside here. All right. All right, so we've got stitching along the edge here, we have an opening here, and then stitching along the edge here. It's, it's a different color, so you can't really see it very well, but it is stitched here. So now we're going to clip the corners and turn it, now that we've got our pocket turned right side out, you can see at the bottom here we have our little opening where we turned it right side out. And then this is our fold up here. So all you have to do now is just top stitch all along the edge here leaving this open so that you can access the inside of the pocket. So a really cool option that we're thinking of doing with this is placing the pocket on your blanket here and then attaching a piece of elastic or ribbon um, to your blanket using the same technique that we've been using throughout the blanket with these little tabs here. Um, and then attaching like a stuffed animal or a piece of fabric or something that you can fit inside the pocket. So next we're gonna do a uh, button with a buttonhole. So what we've got are two pieces of 10 by four inch cotton. And these are gonna serve as our uh, button straps. So, and you can see we've ironed the edges in and then we're gonna fold it long ways, like so. Just like this. So one side is gonna go on the left, one on the right, and these are gonna overlap. One side is gonna have a buttonhole in it, and then the other is gonna have the button attached to it. So we're gonna go ahead and put a buttonhole in and attach our button. So before we put our buttonhole and our button on our straps here, we're going to top stitch around the cotton so that all of our layers stay together. And then we're also going to take our bias strip again, making little peaks, and we're gonna attach our right side to our right side, raw edges together, just like this. And we're gonna sew the edge right there, leaving at least an inch on both sides. 
Okay, so now we've got our button attached, we have our buttonhole made, um, and buttonholes and buttons, you can do these by hand, you can do them with your machine. Uh, these are all machine dependent. So next thing, oh, also, we've got our bias strip attached here at the end there. So all we gotta do now is trim our bias strips. And then we're gonna fold under our raw edges. Now this one is gonna Overlap that button. And there you have it. Of course, don't forget to cut your buttonhole open, um, <laughs> but this will be a button attachment right there. All right, so we have taken another piece of fabric, just like the pocket, folded it in half, and then turned it right side out, and then this time we've top stitched it so that the opening has been closed with that top stitch. What we're going to do is we're going to make a little Vel Velcro flap. So we've got our fabric, and then we've also got two pieces of Velcro. You've got the soft fuzzy side and then the grippy side. I know there's names for them, I don't remember. What they oh, hook and loop. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put one of the sides on the fabric and then the other one is gonna go onto your blanket itself. So you'll stitch one of the sides to your fabric and then you're also going to stitch down the opposite side of that fabric flap because the idea is to have a velcro flap that you can undo and stick back together. So we've got most everything on here. Of course, you can reorient things however you choose. You can add or subtract different activities. Uh, if you can think of anything super creative, feel free to share it with us and share it with the group because uh, that would be awesome to have some more ideas. So once you've got everything kind of where you want it, all you've got to do is just go around the little bias blocks here and top stitch all of these down, all each activity. Now, of course, like your Velcro flap, remember just stitching that one side and then stitching your Velcro down. These longer bias strips, remember to stitch all the way around. Your pocket, only the bottom and the sides, leaving that top open. And then your button, just those sides there. And of course, just let us know if you have any questions. And then when we're done with the top. Oh yes, once your top is finished, you'll take the bottom piece, which is gonna be a softer fabric that is the same size here, You'll put right sides together, stitch all the way around, leaving an opening, and then you'll turn it right side out, and then top stitch around the edge. Yay! Okay, so I just wanted to show you the finished blanket. Um, I added a couple of squares of different fabrics for texture. Um, this one is kind of velvety. We've got some tool, which is rough, um, sequins, um, just to add a little texture to it. Um, I also added a little mouse for the pocket. And then I sewed the backing on right sides together, flipped it and top stitched it to finish the blanket. I'm putting together some little packets of pieces for your lap blankets um, so that you can sew your own 
and if there's some random pieces in there you're not sure with what to, to do with them get creative or you can ask the group or ask me and Megan um, and we can give you some ideas of different activities to put on your blanket for this um, if you have any questions be sure to reach out thank you